no. <laughs> I have Oh, I got the buffalo over here. No, bye. Oh, no, no, no. no. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> what? All right, kids, it's Ross Clark, and welcome back to another special episode today. Introducing our guest, a real honor to have here, inspiring not only me, but many other content creators out there, providing, and I don't say this likely, the most creatively edited ARC videos to exist. With 26K subscribers and his biggest video hitting an eye-watering 1.1 million views and every upload applying some of that sweet After Effects magic, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Finn Reinhardt. Hey, doing, hey what's up? <laughs> how you doing, man? Do you know what? I always do that. Every time I say, how are you doing, straight away, and then I interrupt the person I'm talking to. But this time, I thought I'd wait, but then you didn't speak. <laughs> that, that interrupts you anyway. <laughs> you know, the, the, the problem is, yeah. as you're introducing myself, I'm just constantly smiling so much while the credit you're giving me. So, <laughs> so hopefully you've seen the show and you know we aren't just going to sit here running through questions. I've prepared a little treat nodding to features in some of your videos. So, one of my favorite videos <laughs> that uh, you did, and the first one I think I ever watched was the Lymantria uh, Moth video where you showcase how powerful they really are. Opened my <laughs> eyes and, and many other people out there did, definitely did, mate. So, I've got something prepared, so uh, <laughs> follow me. Get yourself Let me guess, I have to defeat the Ice Titan with the Lymantria. <laughs> Just know it so well, don't you? <laughs> Lymantrias don't have an attack apart from poop. If I, it, oh, and it conveniently just pooped at me. Uh, I believe so. I don't know how this is going to play out, but I thought, why not? Let's see what we can do <laughs> with Moths against the Ice Titan. I don't know. I really don't know. But what we need to do is tame the Ice Titan. <laughs> yeah, I guess it seems to be a good place to start there, your editing quality, where... You seem to push the literal boundaries on how to execute engaging, innovative content. Using, of course, the editing software Adobe After Effects, even offering tutorials of sorts in your uploads. Being so well adapted to After Effects, what attracted or inspired you to use that software? So I'm just going to start talking from a little further back. Oh, good. i give a little bit of a backstory. Yeah. Basically started editing after I finished school. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what to do then. I ended up doing a civil service um, in the field of cross-media journalism. And that kind of sparked my passion for video editing. We were told how to use the camera, how to use basic video editing software, how to use microphones, all that stuff. It kind of gave me an introduction into video editing and also sparked my passion, which yeah, motivated right. me to learn After Effects and other advanced editors, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Audition, um, in my free time. And I figured that with After Effects, I could achieve a lot of the effects that were pleasant to me. Yeah. I think the first video where I used After Effects in was the patchy video, if you've seen that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it started out by using audio visualizers, uh, right. which basically just visualized the different frequencies of the audio. And I started to keyframe them into the scene. At that time, I was still using a different editor called Magic's Video Deluxe. Yeah. And I rendered the things in After Effects because for some reason, I, I didn't really feel like using Premiere back then. Uh, it was still too, too much for me. I felt comfortable with the editing software I had. Mm -hmm. But of course, you can only do some advanced stuff in After Effects, which you can't do yeah. in more standard software like Magic's Video Deluxe. Uh, wait, well, your initial question was what? Uh... Yeah, what? What? Oh, we, oh, got, we yeah. got a mana issue! <laughs> <laughs> Poop at him! Poop at him. it! Poop! Where's it gone? I, I don't know, it's distracted. It's distracted. Go, 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 go. Quick, quick, quick. I, 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 we I can't. <laughs> He's gone for the poop. <laughs> <laughs> During my time at the civil service, mm -hmm. we also used Premiere Pro and uh, After Effects. Yeah. It was a much older version of After Effects, though. Mm -hmm. It was CS6. Since 2014 or something, they used their Creative Cloud instead of the Creative Suite. That's it, yeah. And yeah, CS6 still offered a lot oh, of. No. Oh, whoa, oh whoa, whoa, whoa. no! Oh no! No! <laughs> I have 500 HP. I got so fly. Smart. I got no. I got the, the, the flying in caves. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're we're running this cave on foot. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Oh no! Oh no! Uh. <laughs> Oh, it's something! Oh no. We'll have to get a replacement. 
I think the only thing that they actually used it for was to animate lower thirds, but right. I got really very interested in what other capabilities After Effects might have. And I guess the first two things that I started with was experimenting with audio visualizers, because it's something that I always found very satisfying. Yeah. That there's... Oh, that's a Giga. Yay. Oh. <laughs> We're just going to get a replaced uh, live battery up. <laughs> After Effects CS6, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So during my time at Civil Service, they also used After Effects CS6 alongside yeah. uh, with Premiere. Yeah. And um, I was always curious what other things were possible using this program. And the first things that I experimented with were audio visualizers. Because oh, it's always been... Oh, I thought we we're just gonna... <laughs> oh, my memory and this... No. <laughs> oh, dude, there's so much on you! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Can you not get your gear? Did it all break? Uh... I don't think so. Oh, actually, my mother's is still over there. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got that by Pelovia. No. Yep. Oh, what is this cave? <laughs> oh. Okay. I think we, we just have to run and hope that the Pelovias R don't. Uh, all right, we're gonna rip go, we're gonna go for speed. All right. But I don't. Cool. Oh, Back I got off. the entire squad. Yeah, there's a lot coming. I don't have any parachutes. Oh, we need parachutes. We, we can get parachutes. We'll just find a safe spot and then. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> I see why we need parachutes. We, we, oh no. Oh, oh. Oh, it's rendering the cave. Oh, <laughs> is that what's going on? It's all frozen. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I survived, I survived. I survived. Oh no, I'm not going to survive this. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, I got teleported to you oh, again. I, I, I'm down. I'm heading stung by Pelovia. Oh my words, okay. Did you want to finish? No, 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 oh no. my! Ooh, no, 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 no! I, I can't do a thing! My inventory is too heavy! I'm not in a good place. Oh, are you I, I, I'm being bitten by a Giga. I don't understand how I'm still alive. You can do it. Mate, there's nothing I can do! Oh, oh I'm, I'm just a box in a corner. Oh no! I can how am it. I still alive? Go, 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 go. Okay, oh. tell me when you're tell me oh. when you're gliding. I'm gliding, but if this isn't this isn't right, I'm, I'm... Oh I'm getting no I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Okay, right, let's go. Three, two, two, one. one. Okay, so during my time at the Civil Service, yeah. they use software like After Effects and Premiere Pro. Yeah. I think After Effects was mainly used for animating lower thirds, but I was curious what other things were possible with that software yeah and the first thing i started to use was uh the audio spectrum effect because i always found it very satisfying to create something that reacts to music in some way yeah like that effect visualizes the different frequencies in form of bands that go up and down and that was also the first effect that i utilized in one of my videos which was the patchy video right where i kind of 3d tracked it to a turret wall that we were draining and yeah, at the time I wasn't using Premiere, I was just using After Effects, looking at tutorials on how to do it, and I was curious what else was possible with that software. Mm -hmm. And that's what got me to use it more and discover all the features it had. I'm running so slow. Oh, no, no, no. Right, have we got some space here? Yeah, we got some... That's... that's uh, uh... Oh, you wanted to just sit there? I, I, Are we I, safe there? No, oh, I don't know. I, I, I've kind of got stuck it stuck. I've, I've been a bit of a pickle. <laughs> um. <laughs> How did it one hit me? That's. I can't. I I'm already unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> Noticing your uploads can space out quite far apart. I imagine not only requiring a story to be told on official PvP, where of course you cover your tribe, no, 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 but the heavy editing involved. What do you believe is the biggest challenge in delivering your type of content? Biggest challenge might actually be patience. <laughs> um, I think when I started editing, I always had this this big urge to learn how to create certain effects. Yeah. And sometimes it just takes a while to get it to look how you want it to. But that's so rewarding that it just motivated me to get hit by a Pulovia and die. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and take the heat off you. That didn't work. Come for me! Oh, they're, 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 they're stuck on you! Oh no! <laughs> yeah, like for me, usually when I start a video, it 
most of the time it starts with me finding a song that I really enjoy. Okay, that's cool. When I hear this song, I kind of imagine, okay, what scenes could you create to this? Yeah. Um, I usually use songs that I personally enjoy, which is also the reason why I don't care whether they're monetized or copyrighted. Ah, we actually touch on that in a, in a minute. <laughs> oh, I've got a question about that. Yeah, I yeah, see. Foreshadowing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but usually when I have a nice song, mm -hmm. I kind of start imagining what it could look like. Because right. some songs also convey some certain emotion and uh, you can then imagine what an ARC video could look like if it was for that. Also don't play ARC myself. A yeah. lot of people don't think that I would play all day or something but that's not the case the yeah. last time i've played actively was around a year ago probably and that was oh, right. because of the k37 defense where i played for a week right um but usually i prefer to spend my free time editing videos instead of getting content to edit which <laughs> of course is another reason why it takes longer for me to do videos because i don't record a lot of footage myself so when I'm doing PvP videos, a lot of footage also comes from other people from N3 or tribes that I collaborate with. Okay. Sometimes even a majority of footage from others. Yeah. But yeah, there's always some portion which I record myself. If you're doing a video like the K37 defense, for example, you also have to imagine that you can't record all aspects by yourself because the server will be kept for a week. Yeah. So yeah. when you're lucky, you get three hours of playtime right. and then you can try to join the server again for the next days. <laughs> oh, you're mocked. Enemy. Let's see if so, I can find the beam. So a lot of your footage comes from tribes then? If it's like a mega tribe war video or any yeah. PvP video, a lot of the players in N3 are more skilled than I am. We have some very great PvPers. Yeah. I wouldn't count myself to be amongst them, partially due to my PC and partially because I rather just sit on a dino and try to advance that way. As you can see in the description, I always credit who provides what, and there's yeah. a lot of names. <laughs> so yeah, like we were just talking about before, despite your wonderfully thought out edits, what's noticeable is your inclusion of licensed music tracks, each essentially robbing you of any monetization you can make from those types of videos. Encountering each video being claimed, but yet continuing on, what made you decide to continue using that music that essentially robs you of the credit that you truly deserve? <laughs> That's a well-formulated question. <laughs> when I make a video, or as I said before, my video idea usually starts with a song. And sometimes I even just start editing before I have any footage, either be it animations or listening to the song and thinking, okay, what could I create instead of After Effects or yeah. what arc footage could I fit to this song? So for me, uh, this song plays a key role in the making of the video and it's also one of the hardest things for me to decide. So usually when I have found a song that I genuinely enjoy and yeah. I want to use for the video, I don't care if it's monetized or not. I do this as a hobby and I want people to feel the same emotion that I feel while editing. Yeah. So yeah, that there's no barricade between my creativity and the music that I use. That's truly commendable, mate. It really is. It's always some kind of conflict in some way, because yeah. as you've mentioned, there are some videos on my channel that have been rather successful. Absolutely, yeah. And when you think about how much revenue that could have been, you're like, mm. okay, if I were to publish more frequently and were to use music that's monetizable, yeah. I could make this some kind of job or more than a hobby. Mm -hmm. And that's the conflict between me trying to create something for people to enjoy yeah. and me trying to pursue a hobby that could become a job. And so far I haven't found a solution. I think okay. I'll just stick to what I'm doing, but uh, who knows what I'll come up with in the future. So we've got a nice Titan to attempt to tame. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot about this part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how this is going to go, to be honest. I, d I don't know what the maths are going to do. Like, we're going to try and slow it down with poop. I've got an idea, I've got an idea. How about... Grapple or... We'll grapple, or... yeah, yeah. So one of us oh. flies, one of us shoots. <laughs> what? <Are laughs> we came kidding? all this way and they're the flying. No. Does this no longer count as... No. <laughs> But yeah, speaking offline earlier with you, you told me a little bit about why you seem to have a knack for these quality edits. The educational courses you're pursuing, which I imagine must be leading to something, and with your ARC videos acting as a supplement to fuel that fun at the same time. 
So, where is it all leading to? What's the dream to become a professional of? Oh, that's actually a great question, because I'm not certain myself yet. I'm on. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, I was always very unsure what I would later want to do. Yeah. After school, I wasn't sure. And the civil service is usually a time where you can kind of, let's say, find yourself or discover things that might interest you. Mm -hmm. For me, that was partially the case, because, of course, I discovered my passion for video editing. I also participated nice. in international projects where, actually, I... Oh, wow. I'm, I'm not paying attention to the uh, ice setting. <laughs> Let's go. We've got to get behind his back leg. <laughs> yeah, Oh, yeah. that was close. <laughs> international oh, wait, projects. Wait, wait. Uh, oh, no. Dude, I, I forgot that the uh, Lamentra has limited stamina, so... Oh, um, no! <laughs> I've got an idea. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, I'm going to distract it. Uh-huh. Right. I'll buy you some time. Oh, and dear. I'm already going down. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to... Right, it's on me. It's oh, on me. Good job, good job, good job. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Go on, yeah. International projects, during, then. Wow. Yeah. During my time in the civil service, um, it was very well connected internationally. Yeah. And um, I participated as oh, oh, we should have to wait to get stamina, man. Oh, you said that? Oh no! Oh dear, uh, issues. Hang on, hang on. Oh no! I thought you had stamina. Sorry, mate. No, 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 no. Sorry. Yeah, you were saying. It's fine. Actually, I can tank for it, but it has quite some. It's got a bit dude, of health. It is like one k damage. That's one. Oh, uh, oh. what the hell? <laughs> what? I, uh, you might be a bit uh, frosty there, mate. During my civil service, I participated in international projects as well as yeah. a media trainer in Georgia and Armenia. Okay. And wow. in that sense, I made a lot of experiences during that time, which also helped me find what I want to be in some way, but I still had no idea regarding my profession. I, I always considered maybe doing something film related. I currently study media computer science. <laughs> you could say I'm a tech guy, I'm very interested in technical things. And I think it's also easier to find a job in that field while still keeping YouTube as a hobby. And who knows, if I keep working on my editing skills, yeah. I could also work with other people, do commissions, stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily exclude doing that just when you have a different profession. Of course, it would be amazing to do video editing as your job. To, mm -hmm. If I was able to do what I'm currently doing, just, yeah. let's say, full-time doing these videos, because yeah. that's something that I enjoy. I generally enjoy editing. I enjoy <laughs> watching my own videos. Yeah. And it's something that, that's very rewarding in a sense that it also makes other people happy when they watch it. Especially when you consider that there's a lot of other content creators who aren't significantly larger than me, but they're more consistent. Mm -hmm. And they can already make a living out of it while not even investing too much time into it. Yeah. And that's, of course, a very tempting thing to know that YouTube can give you these possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. Even with a lot less effort. I thought that I will also upload more frequently with less sophisticated videos, of course still well edited. Yeah. With the, yeah. I, by the way, I think the Ice Titan luring doesn't really work. <laughs> oh no, it's gunning for me, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't seem bothered by you one bit. All right. My idea was to publish videos more frequently. Yeah. Oh, too far vertically to damage the Titan. Oh no! <laughs> it just beamed. Me. Oh no! <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I thought of making uh, more quantitative videos uh, than these super highly edited ones that take months to do. Yeah. Of course, I will still be working on these kind of projects. Doing more frequent videos will definitely grow your audience more than these uh, videos that you do every six months. There are a lot of yeah. other channels that have proven it. Mm -hmm. Of course, the videos that perform really well will also attract a lot of people to your channel. But when they see how unfrequently you upload it, could kind of take away their interest to stay updated on your channel. Absolutely. Recently, yeah. before I uploaded the video, I was at a point where I lost more subscribers than I would gain. Oh, really? And it was probably the first time after I created the channel that that was the case. Simply Holy because hell. my content was so infrequent. I think the last arc video, no, the last video was uploaded six months ago. Yeah. And the last arc video around about a year ago at the same time, roughly. Of course, mm. 
Cut in a video of sorts is only half the battle. Most of your uploads each have a fulfilling story woven into them. Most notably, your most recent upload where you invited players to begin a treasure hunt through a passionate poetic delivery and roping in a few familiar content creators at the same time. In a game such as Ark, that allows our own tales to be told. How do you feel Ark can offer an ability to express versus even real life expression? I think in Ark there's, there are some things that are very relatable for everyone who has played. No one just starts out in a mega tribe and experiences the, let's say, high life of Ark, where you have everything, where you don't need to struggle, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And everyone has experienced how it is to, let's say, work for <laughs> your house, work for your tames, when you've gotten your first raptor, first rex, first tame. Yeah. And everyone also remembers how much of an accomplishment that was back then. Or maybe even Absolutely, how much of a yeah, connection yeah. you had to that virtual dino of yours. Absolutely, and I think yeah. in that sense, telling a story that is that relatable allows people to, or like, it, it's something that's universally understood in under among the players of ARK. And in this case, I wanted to, of course, give to the community by uh, giving away treasures that I had gathered along with other people from Mega Tribes. Yeah. And for that, I decided to tell the story of someone, like, I didn't just want to be like, hey, all right, on this server, there's treasures, go ahead, find them. Mm -hmm. As you said, I wanted to tell a story and now I'm frozen. <laughs> oh damn, it killed all the wolves. <laughs> oh, it killed the wolves, damn. Yeah, in this case I wanted to combine it with a story and yeah. I thought it would make sense to do it in a poetic way because, yeah, why did I do that? <laughs> oh no. I think it would make sense to tell a story that everyone would understand which is you or like a survivor losing its house to griefers, hunters. I decided to do it in a poetic way because yeah. I think it would convey the emotion of the moment a little more. Plus, yeah. I wanted to challenge myself a bit as well. At first, I wanted to combine it with the story of Ark, for example, go about the story of Rockwell or something and Helena, how they fit in the notes, and then maybe on each explore note on the island, that's a treasure box or something. But then I decided okay. not only is it more original if I come up with my own story, Mm -hmm. And not only is it easier to write for that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I also discovered that it's, it's it's a lot of fun to come up with that. Like, of course you have to kind of come up with the rhymes, with the story, like how can you make mm. it fit your narrative? It's, uh, how can you make it in a way that's also understandable for viewers? And yeah, yeah I really like that challenge and I'm happy with how it turned out. So yeah, tracing back your content. You seem to have been all about that official life for the longest time. And with any Mega Tribe, mm -hmm. we of course know now everyone has their own individual responsibilities. I'm curious, are you labelled out as the video editor of the tribe? Or do you find yourself more inclined to push another role? And if it's not video editing, or if it is video editing, what would it otherwise be? It's a good question. So you have to consider that um, when I started, or when I joined N3, yeah. which is my current tribe, No No No. Yeah. Uh, no 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 has been around since Legacy. No 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 is one of the oldest tribes and one of the first mega tribes. Mm -hmm. No 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 has invented plenty of things that are still relevant today in the meta. You're right. And they're overall a very dedicated group of players. And when I joined there, I didn't even use my channel to make videos. I think it was my phone account. Right. And uh, <laughs> I didn't think about making videos yet. So I came to them basically as a normal player, which yeah. is why even when I started making videos, I was not yet labeled the YouTube guy, you could say. Yeah. Um, I would still say that I wasn't the greatest farmer or greatest PvPer, mm -hmm. but I had some niche roles or niche tasks that I would do, either be it placing spam or uh, blocking airdrops, you know, when you can. Uh, prevent access from enemies when you block <laughs> the airdrops <laughs> yeah so whoever comes to your server will have a hard time transferring off again right, it was yeah, these yeah, kind yeah. of niche roles that i used to take Which... i have to say i also i also loved doing like smaller griefs back in the day just uh, two yeah. people uh, a trike and an se server or something mm. and just draining the turrets stuff like that or these extravagant ideas like with the lamentria you know and three <laughs> Whenever there's a niche dino or something, N3 has someone who's dedicating a lot of time to yeah. improving it. it. It's very interesting to play with because we were also 
one of the first tribes to utilize the full potential of the Velo, right. which was crazy powerful back then with the oh, yeah. spike attack. And we were also one of the only ones to utilize the Lamentria, which, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> might it. not might not have been as powerful as portrayed in the video. We got really lucky that they didn't find us. Yeah. But still, it's it's these kind of things that really brighten up the day when you oh, it does. when it actually works because it, it's so humorous at the same time and no way you, you could tank too much on a low mantria but the fact that you thought about why don't we just try this out and it actually worked to some extent is funny in itself yeah right yeah because it's, it's the only like it has a unique ability it's the only flyer that can consume veggie cakes yeah. and thus can heal so yeah, that's a concept that could oh, work in great. theory. And it. of course, we had someone uh, who was very dedicated with Lamentrias. His name is Hanky, right. and he was also up for trying it, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to come back to the question that you have, if yeah. I'm like the YouTuber from N3, or yeah. if I have a certain position from that, I think I would actually deny that. To the mm -hmm. outside world of Ark, I am the face of N3, and Okay. There's probably no disputing yeah. that. Official yeah. doesn't have more than, let's say, 10,000 players, roughly. This yeah. is just a wild guess. Could be more, could be less, yeah. give or take. And if you consider that the video where I showcase the potential or the story of N3 has 1.1 million views, mm -hmm. then <laughs> it's not going to be official players you've, who've seen it like 110 times, you know, yeah, or yeah. even more. So I guess through my videos, other people outside of the official world, let's say, know about No 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 N3 as a tribe and have also gotten to love N3, I would say. Mm -hmm. N3 has always been a very clean, a very legit tribe. We've always tried to play by the rules. Yeah. Unlike other tribes, <clears throat> I'm not gonna <laughs> name any, but <laughs> I think they would feel addressed. Um, so I've, in, in that sense, I've also always felt very very good with representing N3 because yeah. it's a tribe that I can stand behind. I can stand behind the politics. That's cool. It's a very respectful environment in there as well. Inside of N3, there's only partial support for my videos though. Right. There are some people who actually think that I'm using N3 to get views for my videos. Ludicrous to say that the only reason why my video got 1.1 million views because it had N3 in the title, that's not the case. No. Some of them, or a lot of them, also know to appreciate that, and they're fine with assisting, for example, for the event and providing their own items and dinos. Some people still think I play in Gang Gang, because I made the base tour for them, right? Yeah. yeah I, I now have like an FAQ channel in my Discord where I answer most of these questions. Mm -hmm. But um, that's the thing, I'm generally very good with most tribes out there. Because I've always been respectful to them, I never really talked shit about them. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of them also know to value the effort that I put in the videos. And of course, when you make a base tour for someone, I guess they're generally <laughs> on good terms with you. Right, well, this isn't going very well. I'm I'm thinking it's time we got to upgrade these, uh, these maps. We gotta go mech. <laughs> Wait, we're going mech. Let's go. Shoot! Shoot! <laughs> Let's see how we got on. Yeah, look into the future of Ark, where you've prepared yourself with a nice, shiny new PC build. A video I was mesmerized by, by the way. Uh, but will certainly force your tribe to start from scratch. Something some of us may not have experienced since the legacy handover. How do you feel that a fully fledged sequel and a new start of sorts will change or shape you and your tribe? So that's a good question. So as far as I know, at this stage that Ark currently is in, Lost Island will be the last up major update that Ark receives, right? Ah, no. There'll be a, there's going to be a second mod map after that. It's very unattractive for me to play it again actively, you know? Right. I have to say, after I've played for probably a week, yeah. um, I was really... Ooh. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> that's yours <laughs> done for. After playing Ark again a little actively during the event for like a week probably, yeah, I got really motivated to play again. I, it was so much fun actually, because so many things have changed nowadays. Absolutely, items yeah. and dinos are so much inflated. It's crazy. Back in the day, if you were going around in tech suit, you were considered to be wasteful or something. And now yeah. everyone's just owning multiple cap tech suits, and it's like it's nothing basically. It's crazy. Isn't With it? Genesis and the farming and stuff. A lot of people have debated about wiping the ARC service to restart. 
Mm -hmm. I think for that to really work and take into effect, uh, they would have to balance these gathering rates. Yeah. I know there's a lot of other mechanics that I'm maybe not as informed about. For example, I've heard that Noglins are very, very OP or something. Mm -hmm. um, of course, when I still played the Titans and the um, Titans, Max, and all that stuff was very OP as well. Yeah. I think it has changed a little bit, but either way, if they were to wipe it, then they should adjust their game to a point where there's going to be no fast advancements like there are right now. And, of course, they have to make sure that it's not possible to dupe, which no. is always, of course, not 100% possible to implement, mm. but they would have to at least fix all the known issues before that. There's so few information yet that I've seen in the trailer. Can't really make up an opinion, I have to say. Yeah, fair enough. I'm very excited yeah. to see what they will actually, or like what the game will be like. I hope they don't put too much of a focus on Vin Diesel being in there, because <laughs> I think that would kind of ruin the immersion, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but I'm, yeah, I'm very curious oh. to see what will happen there. I think a lot of other YouTubers yeah. are also looking forward to it a lot. And mm. maybe you are also looking forward oh, to playing yeah, and experiencing yeah, yeah. it. There we go! There's one! Way! Oh, right. no way. Next one on his shoulder. Yeah, now you're streaming. <laughs> hey, <laughs> now it's but working. As soon as, soon as N3 sees me struggling here, I'm probably going to get beamed from the tribe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Hey, oh, there we yeah. go. One left. Nice, nice. Uh, nice. I think it's on its belly or something. Something happened. Did you just dab? Oh, that's it. You've done it. Dude. You dabbed. There we Same go. Same kaiju. <laughs> nice. It's Gamma, but we'll accept it. We've got a Titan. <laughs> Oh, it comes the worst. Jeez. Right. Well, <laughs> as mentioned at the start of this, you unquestionably inspire me and my work, as well, I'm sure, as many others. But as a wise man once said to me, we can't work blind. So with that in mind, what do you believe has been your main sources of inspiration when creating your work? I guess there's something intrinsic in creating something that's in it in and of itself a good motivation to make these videos and yeah. when you have this final product which you've spent or which you know you've spent many months editing and thinking about it's kind of a manifestation of all that work that and thought that you put into it yeah and when it comes together in a way that's enjoyable for you and for others to watch, it's also inspiring to make more of the same content. I, I guess in that sense, it might be the biggest reward to share it with others and to finish it as well. I have to say, whenever I'm at a point where I can say I can export the video now, which sometimes takes around a day, yeah. and then upload it and then unlist it, I Sometimes even the night before I can't really sleep because I'm so excited about it. I think when I published the When Megatribes Face Off video, yeah. I had around 1,000 subscribers, which was already a big milestone at that point. Yeah, right. Um, but this was the first video where I put a ludicrous amount of effort in. Yeah. The Lamentia video as well, of course, but this one was on a different scale, you could say. And I think it also shows with the length, the story, and yeah. the editing that went into it. The video, when it kind of caught on, yeah. it was something very new f to me. Mm -hmm. I was very happy back then when I got around 3,000 views because I wasn't used to the attention that my videos get. Mm -hmm. And for a channel of my size that was three times the amount of subscribers, yeah. most of the comments were still from people on official that I knew, yeah. mostly people from my alliance that support whatever I was sharing there. But the more I posted, the more comments from people that I didn't know were also showing up. And when that video hit, at first I noticed that I was gaining a lot more subscribers than usually, mm -hmm. but the, the video views were, weren't increasing. At some point I got more subscribers than views per hour, which was very confusing. Um, but I think it's just because the YouTube view count wasn't really updating. Right. Either way, that video in total got me around 10,000 subscribers, I think. I remember wow. uh, I was on an international project in Poland at that time. Yeah. And I was betting with my friends, okay, how many views does it have tomorrow? And yeah. it was kind of funny. We were betting like uh, things like sweets or something. Hey, <laughs> if you win, I'll, I'll buy you sweets or something. Right. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to fight excited. a forest titan. You're, you're on turrets. I'll kind of walk us up close to it. 
I might, I might jump on a turret as well. Nah, friendly fire, we're all good. <laughs> but win or lose, this is the last question. So, what most might overlook is how much of the content you recreate, helping to provide a cinematic illusion most wouldn't believe until you talked about this yourself. How difficult is it to recreate scenes when perhaps it could be attempting to reference even ragged wait, wait, wait. bases? I, I just got grabbed by the vine. Oh no, did you? Well, yeah, that's a good question, because um, I think that that's the Pareto principle, if you know. I'm not sure if it also is pronounced that way in English, but that mm -hmm. with 20% of the effort, you can achieve 80% of the result. Ah, I love I'm it. Not sure, I'm not sure if it applies to video editing as well as it does to other things. I think, for example, homework might be a little easier to apply that to. There are some things, I've seen some other ARC YouTubers in general have really stepped up their game as well. For example, some people use the 3D camera tracker effect to have 3D text in their videos. They just put it somewhere, they use Saber to make it glow and pop, but right. they don't put a lot of more thought into it. However, for the viewer, it still looks amazing because they're like, oh wow, he went that extra mile and 3D tracked his scene. I think in that sense, you can achieve decent results very quickly. I personally am very perfectionist and <laughs> <laughs> some people probably wouldn't believe how much work simple or how much work some scenes might have taken. In the recent video, the animation uh, where my logo appears in space, I'm not sure if you call it, like uh, the guy flies up with the tech suit. Yeah. And then he's like, uh, to understand my power to, to its full extent, and then my logo appears. That scene I edited with people in Discord, and these five seconds probably yeah. ended up being more than 10 hours or something. And it didn't even make the, like the entire scene didn't even make it into the video, just this small sequence. I think if you were to recreate everything from the video, it will of course be much faster as you <laughs> have a reference already. Yeah. But when you're starting fresh, and you don't necessarily know what you want to have. Also very perfectionist when it comes to... Whoa, I'm getting damage. Oh, oh I'm sta the Titan is stomping me. <laughs> <laughs> I had, oh no! I totally neglect neglected that, that that was the thing. I was kind of enjoying that the, the tight it was on top of our head and didn't seem to be doing anything. But yeah, maybe. Right, hang on. I'm right. I, I, I respawned on the Titan. Wait, don't move, don't move. Uh, we're still neutral. Yeah, that's it. We're still neutral now, so we'll both just get on the. Oh, but don't... we have too many guns now. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. <laughs> All the guns. Power. Oh! Just... Oh, you got slapped. Right. Was taking. I'm just yeah, going to sit on the Titan and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is death. It, it, I don't think we're going to win this. Oof. Oh, <laughs> there you go. It's game over. The Forest Titan won. And there we go. Finn, to have you on the show is a struggle to contain the fanboy in me. Someone who everyone who edits content for ARK must categorically watch. You deserve so much more attention for your work, and I really wish you to have a bright and successful future, showcasing the talent you have a very keen eye for. Please tell the rassholes what's going on in your life and what you're working on next. First of all, I really appreciate your kind words. <laughs> it means a lot to me. You're welcome. Recently, especially with this video, a lot of larger YouTubers have also approached me and have given me credit for it. The next video that I have planned will be an arc in real life video. We've went ahead and we've used a real camera to film the video and uh, I've already edited some parts of it because during me editing the last video I didn't always have things that I could work on because I was relying on so many people to provide their part to the video either be it a voiceover or footage recording with Skittle that I used some time and dedicated it to editing this video we can see. Maybe we can even show some kind of teaser here or something. Oh, that'd be <laughs> wicked. Yeah, get an exclusive. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> we can do that. We can do that. Awesome. True. Cool. And yeah, that should release whenever I find more time. Like currently, I'm pretty busy with uni stuff. Yeah. And it will take some time I, until I can dedicate the required time it takes to this video. Because this will be another one where I don't do any compromises. After yeah. that, however, I think I'll look into content that I can produce more frequently. Maybe even some shorts, maybe some more explanatory videos, 
things like that. There's Finn. Please <laughs> go check him out. Go subscribe to him. Absolute legend. Thanks all for tuning in. Who do you want to see me interview next? Comment below. Let me know. My name is Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, ah, peace out. Thank you.